what is the need for talking about fetal circulation separately well fetal circulation is different from the postnatal circulation because of two fundamental differences that lung is not functioning and placenta is the lung of the fetus because of this there is increase in pulmonary vascular resistance okay so pulmonary vessels have more resistance and there is decreased systemic vascular resistance so systemic vessels have less resistance so you know that uh, resistance when more blood flow is less and when resistance is less blood flow is more okay so because of this we will see that there are various changes in the fetal circulation so here there is just a schematic diagram showing that uh, simple right atrium blood going to right ventricle from there to pulmonary vessels but it is not possible that the circulation goes to pulmonary vessels so instead from right ventricle the blood goes via a connection known as ductus arteriosus to the descending aorta and descending aorta as it continues it forms arteries and various branches of those arteries to supply different tissues amongst these there are two umbilical arteries which go to the placenta and within the placenta the capillaries from these umbilical arteries get oxygenated and they combine together to form the umbilical vein so let us see further that how fetal circulation is different so first is that there is increased pulmonary resistance because lungs are collapsed okay lungs don't function in the fetal life so lungs are collapsed because of that the pulmonary vessels are also collapsed along with the lungs right so here we are seeing that this is the right atrium this is the right uh, ventricle okay from there pulmonary vessels are arising and they are going to the lungs however because these lungs are collapsed lungs are collapsed very less blood flows into these pulmonary vessels in fact the connection the ductus arteriosus which is there from there it is going into the descending aorta okay so that is one thing second thing is that because of this uh, increased pulmonary vascular resistance and decreased systemic vascular resistance right atrial pressure is more than the left atrial pressure so there is a patent foramen ovale which is present between the right atrium and the left atrium so here you see here that uh, the right atrium and left atrium are connected so there is a foramen ovale so that blood also flows from right atrium to the left atrium okay so two things we have seen ductus arteriosus connecting pulmonary artery to the descending aorta then right atrium is connected to the left atrium by means of a foramen foramen ovale and blood can flow from right atrium to left atrium because right atrial pressure is more third umbilical vein plus portal vein form ductus venosus okay so here this diagram you see that here there is placenta where oxygenation of blood is occurring and this umbilical vein combines with the portal vein and forms ductus venosus so here this is ductus venosus right so blood is not going into the liver sinusoids rather it is bypassing the liver and it is draining directly into the inferior vena cava okay so three fundamental differences ductus arteriosus ductus venosus and patent foramen ovale now because of this there are two different streams of blood flow going on we will talk about them one by one so here again there is a schematic diagram now i told you that umbilical vein umbilical vein which is carrying the oxygenated blood okay which is carrying the oxygenated blood combines with the portal vein and via the ductus venosus so here there will be ductus venosus it drains into the inferior vena cava now inferior vena cava blood enters into the right atrium and you see the stream of blood is such that it is coming from the inferior vena cava it doesn't enter into the right ventricle the blood just flows from right atrium to the left atrium via the patent foramen ovale then from left atrium it enters into the left ventricle and from left ventricle this blood enters into the aorta okay so you see the oxygenated blood which is coming it is entering into the left atrium left ventricle and flowing into the aorta and from this aorta from the branches of the aorta the blood will be supplied to head neck upper limb and the thoracic region okay so oxygenated blood is going to these regions 
and what is the percentage of oxygenation so when the blood is getting oxygenated at the level of placenta it is 80% saturated okay so saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen is 80% when this blood mixes with the portal blood portal blood is deoxygenated when this blood mixes with the portal blood it becomes 67% oxygenated right and then as it is going to the left atrium there is some mixing of blood which is coming from the superior vena cava this is another stream of blood we will talk about it in a second so this there is some mixing of blood here so that the blood which is entering into the left atrium to the left ventricle and going via the aorta there is little decrease in the oxygenation again so that is 62 percent okay so this 62% saturated blood is supplied to the head, neck, upper limbs and to the thoracic region. But there is another stream of blood which is coming via the superior vena cava. So this is bringing deoxygenated blood from the head and neck region. Once the aorta, it is supplying the blood to these regions, then the venous blood is being collected and it is draining via the superior vena cava again into the right atrium. But this stream of blood is flowing in different direction. The top one, it enters into the right atrium. From right atrium, it enters into the right ventricle. From there, it enters into the pulmonary artery and pulmonary artery, I told you, it won't supply to the lungs. Like very less blood flow goes to the lungs, it is only 10%. Okay. So, whatever blood is entering into the pulmonary artery, 10% of it is going in the lungs. However, rest of it, it is going via the ductus arteriosus to the descending aorta. Okay. So you see left ventricle, it is in the ascending aorta and arc of aorta. And from here, it is going to the head neck region. But this, which is coming from the superior vena cava, entering into the right uh, ventricle and via the pulmonary artery, ductus arteriosus, this blood moves into the descending aorta. Okay. So from the descending aorta, this is supplying blood to lower limbs and the abdominal regions. Okay. And we see that this blood is less oxygenated than the blood which is going to the head neck region because this is a deoxygenated blood which is coming from the superior vena cava. It is only 28% oxygenated and as it enters into the right atrium, yes, there is some mixing with the blood which is coming from the inferior vena cava. Some mixing is there. So, it increases the oxygenation of this blood to 52%. Okay. Then, as it is entering via the ductus arteriosus to the aorta, again, there is some mixing from the blood which is coming from this aortic region from the left ventricle. So, again, it increases little bit more the oxygenation to 58%. So, this oxygenated blood with 58% oxygenation is going into the other tissues like gut and then it is entering the umbilical arteries for oxygenation okay then it becomes 80 percent oxygenated okay no need to remember all the percentage of oxygenation but fundamental you should remember that even though the blood gets 80 percent oxygenated still there is mixing of blood with the deoxygenated blood thus reducing the oxygenation right and uh, better oxygenated blood that is 62 percent which is entering the aorta it is supplying the head, neck and upper limb and thoracic region. Okay, that is one thing. Second thing is that you see that the oxygen gradient which is present at the level of the placenta is quite less. That means the oxygen diffusion which is occurring at the level of the placenta is lesser. Okay, plus these villi which are there in the placenta, they are also very thick. So, oxygen finds difficulty in diffusion. So, there is a hemoglobin in the fetal blood that is hemoglobin F which is responsible for getting the fetal blood more oxygenated and why it is occurring? This hemoglobin F has more affinity, more affinity for oxygen. Okay, Hemoglobin F has more affinity for oxygen because it doesn't bind with 2,3-DPG. It has very less affinity for 2,3-DPG. Adult hemoglobin has more affinity for 2,3-DPG, so it has less affinity for oxygen. Hemoglobin F has less affinity for 2,3-DPG, it has more affinity for oxygen. So, this oxygen dissociation curve of hemoglobin F is shifted to left, left shift of the curve. Left shift occurs when there is increased affinity of hemoglobin to the oxygen. So, this ensures that more oxygen 
content is available in the fetal blood despite less oxygen gradient and despite the thickened placental villi. Understanding? So I would suggest you that you go back to the video of oxygen transport and have a look that what is this oxygen dissociation curve and how hemoglobin F is different from adult hemoglobin. Fine. So these were the fundamental differences I said and most importantly it is if you see the changes are because of increased pulmonary vascular resistance because the lungs are collapsed and decreased systemic vascular resistance. Why there is decreased systemic vascular resistance because of the presence of placenta and because of the presence of umbilical arteries. There is so much vasodilation happening in this area that there is decreased systemic vascular resistance right. Now. After birth, the changes have to revert to that of the postnatal condition. Okay, so what is going to happen? Main changes again will be decrease in pulmonary vascular resistance and increase in systemic vascular resistance. Understanding? So it is switching. Pulmonary vascular resistance decreases, systemic vascular resistance increases. And how that will happen? When the lungs expand, okay, as there is expansion of the lungs, it will pull the pulmonary vessels also outward. Okay, so there is dilation on the pulmonary vessels. Pulmonary vessels are no longer collapsed. That is one thing. Okay, that is going to decrease the pulmonary vascular resistance. Second thing, with the lung expansion, there will be oxygenation of the whatever little blood. I told you 10% of blood is entering. So, whatever little blood is entering into the lungs, there will be oxygenation of the blood. And in pulmonary circulation, increased oxygen acts as vasodilator. So, there is a difference here. In systemic circulation, increased oxygen acts as vasoconstrictor. Decrease in oxygen in systemic circulation causes vasodilation. In pulmonary circulation, it is opposite. When oxygen increases, there is vasodilation. When oxygen decreases, there is vasoconstriction. This is the concept of ventilation perfusion matching. Okay. So, increased oxygen causes vasodilation, further dilating the pulmonary vessels and hence decreasing the pulmonary vascular resistance. Okay, whenever there is dilation of the vessels, resistance is going to decrease. So, there is decrease in pulmonary vascular resistance. Systemic vascular resistance on the other hand increases. Why it is increasing? Because placenta has been removed. Second thing, there is constriction of the umbilical arteries and why do they constrict? Because of increased oxygen, see opposite changes are taking place. In pulmonary vessels, same oxygen is acting as a vasodilator but in systemic circulation, same increased oxygen is acting as a vasoconstrictor. So, there is constriction of the umbilical arteries thus it increases the systemic vascular resistance. Then there is another vasoconstrictor which is there that is bradykinin. Okay, so this is little bit different. Bradykinin generally acts as a vasodilator but in case of umbilical arteries it acts as a vasoconstrictor. So with decrease in pulmonary vascular resistance what will happen? Flow to the lungs is going to increase. Okay, so from the right ventricle the blood which is going via the pulmonary arteries and it was entering via the ductus arteriosus into the aorta. Now because here you see resistance is increasing what will happen the blood will preferably go from the pulmonary arteries to these pulmonary branches of the pulmonary arteries okay so it is going to enter into the lungs and systemic vascular resistance actually becomes more than that of the pulmonary vascular resistance so the blood anyways cannot enter from the low pressure in the pulmonary vessels to the high pressure in the systemic vessels in fact they will start a backflow right See, flow always occurs from high pressure to low pressure, right? So, that's what we are talking here that now the flow cannot occur from the pulmonary circulation to the systemic circulation because of the change in the pressures, okay? Then next is increase in systemic vascular resistance. So, when systemic vascular resistance increases, now left ventricle, left ventricle which is pumping into the aorta now will encounter an increased afterload. That means it has to pump against the increased pressure in the vessel. So, there will be increase in pressure in the left ventricle. Hence, there will be increase in the pressure in the left atrium as well. Okay. So, now again what is happening before I told you that right atrial pressure was more than that of the left atrial pressure. Now, we are talking because of the change in the pressures. Now, left atrial pressure has become more than the right atrial pressure. So, now that blood flow 
from the right atrium to the left atrium is not going to occur. In fact, this is the foramen ovale and here there is a wall in the foramen ovale. So because of this increased pressure from the left atrium, this wall will be shut. Okay, so this valve is going to be shut and there will be no flow from the atrium, from either side of the atrium. And in time, in some months, this will be adherent. There will be fibrous adhesion here. So it will be permanently closing, right? So foramen ovale closes due to increased left atrial pressure. Then ductus arteriosus, which is present in the pulmonary arteries, connecting the pulmonary arteries with the descending aorta, that also constricts. Immediately it constricts again because of increase in oxygen concentration. And within 24 to 48 hours, there is intimal thickening also and further within months, there is fibrosis. Okay, So that also permanently closes because of increase in oxygen tension and also because of decrease in prostaglandin F2 alpha prostaglandin f2 alpha okay so prostaglandin f has been found to keep it vasodilated in fetal circulation when it decreases it causes vasoconstriction okay so that also decreases leading to ductus arteriosus constriction so that now natural flow from the right atrium to right ventricle to the pulmonary circulation then coming to left atrium then coming to left ventricle and then to the aorta is established okay so there is no bypassing from the right ventricle directly to the aorta then ductus venosus ductus venosus also constricts because there is no blood flow through the umbilical veins so here now these arteries here there is constriction so these branches are no longer working for some time there is drainage of whatever placental circulation whatever blood is there it will drain into the umbilical vein but then there will be stoppage of the blood flow because the placenta has been removed so these ductus venosus there will be constriction here but if this constricts you see this portal vein this is portal vein okay here there is portal vein now here we are talking there is constriction but this portal blood has to enter into the inferior vena cava so how it will enter see once this ductus venosus constricts and here also this will be non functional so there is development of back pressure in the portal vein so portal vein pressure increases to approximately 6 to 10 millimeter mercury now this increase in pressure is enough to push the blood through the liver sinusoids so liver sinusoids were here which were inactive which were also closed so this increase in portal venous pressure now pushes the blood into the liver sinusoids and then it gets collected and then it drains into the inferior vena cava so now the blood flows via the liver in fetal circulation blood is not flowing via the liver it is bypassing the liver also it is bypassing the lung it is bypassing the liver okay at the level of the lung it is bypassing by ductus arteriosus at the level of the liver it is bypassing by ductus venosus so these are the changes which happen in postnatal life thus resuming the postnatal blood flow so fundamentally just remember that in fetal life there is increased pulmonary vascular resistance decreased systemic vascular resistance and there is foramen ovale ductus arteriosus ductus venosus postnatally the reverse happens there is decrease in pulmonary vascular resistance and increase in systemic vascular resistance and this causes the closure of foramen ovale ductus arteriosus and ductus venosus second thing in fetal life the heart is functioning in parallel manner okay in parallel manner heart is functioning see there is one flow from right atrium to right ventricle to the descending aorta via the ductus arteriosus so, so that was one second was from right atrium to left atrium to left ventricle and then going via the ascending aorta and supplying the head neck region okay so these two sides of the heart are functioning in parallel but postnatally they start working in series okay so that was all about the concepts in fetal circulation. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.